So like I said, there are definitely some questions that are just straightforward algebra questions on the exam, but there's also um, uh, like a lot of this stuff just in other questions. Something like collecting like terms is just something that you do a lot of in mathematics. Uh, in, when you're doing linear systems, you do it. When you're doing equations of lines, you're going to do it. Possibly in a measurement question, you might see something like that. So it's all over the place. But essentially how I would do this is I would notice that the x squared terms go together, the x terms go together, and the constants go together. So this ends up being 5x squared. You don't have to rewrite it like this if you were given a question. I'm just doing it to show you how they regroup together. Minus 7, minus 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I've got them all. 5 minus 9 is negative 4. And the variable part doesn't change when you're adding things together. 7 minus 4 is 3, so 3x. Three and negative 7 minus 2 is minus 9. Right? Done. That's it. Don't People want to keep adding together at that point. 4 and 3 and 9. No, they're not like terms. You cannot add them together. And we're used to seeing trinomials like this at this point, right? We're used to seeing that kind of stuff. Um, there's not a lot of these kinds of questions that you need to worry about, but a quick review, they're, they're, like the rules involved are, is something that we need to know. How would I multiply? So that was adding terms together. How would I multiply terms together? I multiply the numbers, so 5 times 4. And it's negative, negative 20. And then I multiply the x's. Who knows what x squared times x is? Very good. How'd you get that? You add the exponents together, right? So it's x squared plus x to the 1. 2 plus 1 is 3. So that's your new exponent. So y cubed times y squared. 3 plus 2 is 5. So it's y to the 5. And you're done. And then similarly, how would I do it if I was, is that the only questions? Yep. How would I do it if I was dividing? Well, I'm going to multiply on top first. 10 times 3 is 30. x cubed times x squared. Add the exponents x to the 5, y to the 4th, divided by 5xy squared. And now I do the same thing, same idea. If you know how to multiply, you can always divide as well. 30 divided by 5 is 6. But when I'm doing the variable part, instead of adding the exponent, what do you think I do? Thomas. Very good. So 5 minus 1 is 4, x to the 4. And 4 minus 2 is 2, so y squared. OK. Getting on to the good stuff, distributive property. This is, this is more where we see this kind of math. And you have to know how to now, now you have to know how to multiply 2x times 6x. So what is that going to be? Brianna? Very nice. Hold on. Stop there. 12x squared. 2 times 6 is 12. x times x is x squared. We've done a lot of that. That's pretty familiar. That's like a simple, specific version of this stuff that we didn't do as much of, right? So this is the kind of thing I want you to be able to do. And then 2 times 3 is negative 6. And I'm multiplying x by like there is no x there, so it just stays the same. I'm not adding any more exponents to it. And multiplying binomials is a new skill to grade 10. And how do we do it? We multiply x by everything, and then we multiply negative 4 by everything. So x times x is x squared. x times 9 is 9x, negative 4x. Negative 4 times 9 is negative 36. And then if you've been paying attention and working at this stuff throughout the course, you remember that very often, almost always, the two middle terms are like terms and they add together. So that's x squared plus 5x minus 36. And again, there's your collecting like terms. We're not going to see questions like this really because we didn't. That, this is a grade 9 skill that you learn. So you're not going to get a question that says, add the like terms, but you're going to have to do it as part of another question. What does this kind of look like? Brianna? 
Anybody remember? It looks like a factoring question, right? Like a trinomial factoring question. Two numbers that add to 5 and multiply to 36. Because it is. Because that's the opposite of expanding. Remember when we learned that? Those are opposite operations. So whenever you expand, you're going to get something that looks like that factoring thing. And if you've been doing all of this and you've made that connection, then you know what you've done is correct because you've gotten something that, you've got an answer that makes sense. Don't factor it. Leave it like that because that's what you're supposed to do. But just, you know, hey, that makes sense. That's the kind of answer I should have gotten. Okay, another one here. Uh, what does this actually mean? This is what people want to do. They want to do 2x squared, which is 4x squared, plus 25. They just want to square both things. Like, that's almost like it's distributive property. I square this and I square that. But this is wrong. It's an easy mistake to make. It's a common mistake. In fact, I bet somebody will do it on the exam. What's wrong with it, Brianna? It, what this actually means is 2x plus 5 times 2x plus 5, very good, which is 2x times 2x, which is 4x squared, so we got that part right, 2x times 5, which is 10x, that's that one, 5 times 2x is 10x, and 5 times 5 is 25, we got that part right, but we missed 20x plus, we missed that middle part. If you forget how, what this actually means, and you make that common mistake, you've missed that middle part. Any questions on any of that? Are you thinking about difference of squares? So that's factoring, we'll look at that another day. But it's related to this, but it's the, going the opposite direction. So not something you have to worry about for this. But, you know, Brianna brings up a good point, like, on an exam, mixing up all the different kinds of questions all together, it's very different from doing it in different parts. Now, now we did some of that throughout the year, because we didn't just look at one topic at a time. We did, we mixed them up a little bit. So we've had some practice with that, but it does make it harder. Okay, and this last one is just, um, uh, like, got a got a couple of steps to it. So I'm the best way to do this is by leaving the negative 4 out front and doing the two brackets. x times 2x is 2x squared minus 5x, that's that part, minus 6x plus 15. Negative 3 times negative 5 is positive 15. And a, and a lot of people miss this step, but I would simplify this. Minus 11x plus 15. And when you multiply two binomials, when you multiply two brackets that look like this, something plus something, something plus something, or minus, or whatever, you should get a trinomial. That's what you're aiming for. When you got that, you want to feel comfortable that you've done something correctly. For the most part, you did it right. So it's a good reason why it's nice to finish that inside part, and then you multiply everything by negative 4. So negative 8x squared plus 44x minus 60. And you're done. Any questions? 